morning, guys. So, I'm a bit late to the party, but today I found out this uh, awesome web-based sculpting uh, application called Sculpt GL. Uh, it's been out since 2020, I believe, and it's uh, made by the same guy that made Nomad Sculpt for uh, for the iPad. And yeah, it's it's a uh, pretty fun little uh, sculpting program for free, absolutely free. And you uh, basically just load it up in your browser. If you search for Sculpt GL, uh, it should bring you to this website here. And uh, yeah, it just loads up. And um, I had a quick play with it for about half an hour and came up with this little guy. <laughs> And uh, it can load OBJs and export OBJs and STLs for 3D printing, printing as well. So you can export this guy out uh, into you know, your 3D printing program and print him straight away or export it uh, into uh, ZBrush for further detailing. Uh, so as a free program, uh, it's got some really good features. And the one that I like the most is uh, the if you go into the topology and go into dynamic topology here and you see subdivision and decimation so this is a dynamic uh, topology very similar to ZBrush's Sculptress Pro and it basically just helps you to uh, work in a low poly to get the major forms and then you can continue to refine detail as you go along so one of the main things when you're sculpting is to you know, try and keep the polygons as low as possible, uh, so it doesn't. Um, so you're not sculpting a ton of detail at the start, and you're just focusing the main fo forms. And once you lay those down, uh, you, you can start detailing. Really, uh, um, you can start detailing them. So. First thing you want to do when you load it up is you'll see this, and you definitely want to go to camera or change the FOV from 45 to something like 20, and that just gives you a uh, a wider uh, focal length. You don't really want to sculpt with a wide focal length. You want to you want to sculpt with a short focal. So do that, and then in your topology section, go into dynamic topology and tick this box, and subdivisions. So you want to set this to about 20, and you want to set decimation to about 10. And if you press the W key on the keyboard, it just shows you the topology, the wireframe of the mesh. And the brush uh, that you want to start off with, the drag, it's similar to the snake hook brush. Basically, as you drag out the mesh, it will... So the default sphere, it come, you can see that it's making the topology uh, much lower. So the default sphere that... Ports, it's really high density you don't want to start sculpting on that straight away you want to basically start with a low topology mesh like this so if you just use a drag and setting the subdivision decimation to here uh, it will start lowering the topology for you straight away and you can start sculpting and as you can see it has a very similar, similar thing when you pull out mesh it actually adds topology uh, if it if you don't have dynamic topology enabled what's going to happen is uh, I'll just turn that off you're going to start getting crunchy stuff like that All right so you want to enable dynamic topology but you want to make sure you set the subdivision and decimation to quite low to start off with and I'm just holding down shift to smooth it and then we can start pulling it out like so but 
without smoothing it and I'll just turn uh, actually and uh, so let's say you want to start detailing and the crease brush is good for that now right now it's not too bad you can still get some details on it but if you wanted more details more topology It is actually doing uh, details based on camera view as well. So I think leaving it on 20 and 11 is really good. But if you needed more topology, then you can crack this up. And that's going to give you more details. More polygons. But just be careful. How much detail you start adding. The main thing is to again to block out your main shapes first with the drag brush. And just learn the shortcuts as well. So if you hold down X on your keyboard, it lets you adjust the size of the brush. To zoom in and zoom out, it's control and alt to pan, holding, holding down alt. And if you click on an empty area on your canvas, it's rotate. So it's exactly the same as uh, ZBrush, which is really good. And I'll just turn off the wireframe. So you can see, uh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's actually really fun. And in my opinion, this is actually better than the free version of ZBrush uh, that they offer. Uh, that's very limited to, limited to what you can do, but with this one, it feels much more, uh, much more flexible. And, you know, I can see that uh, if you're starting out sculpt with digital sculpting and you don't want to learn ZBrush or Blender, they, they, you know, they can take time to learn. This is definitely one of the best ways to get into it for free. Now, the only thing that you need is a decent uh, tablet, a mouse tablet, which you can pick up for around $90 for the cheapest one. And that will give you a uh, tablet that has pressure sensitivity, which, uh, which is pretty, which is really important actually when it comes to sculpting. Uh, don't want to sculpt with the mouse. Uh, I've tried it and it's, it's not fun. <laughs> using a tablet will get you much further and you'll enjoy the process much better uh, but yeah this is definitely something to uh, to have a play around with if you want to get into digital sculpting and uh, again you know whatever you sculpt here you can either save it out as its own uh, SGL project file and which you can open later or you can save it as STL or VJ and then uh, that will let you 3D print it so that's pretty awesome uh, and I also tested loading a model that's pretty heavy so the Octo, Octo skull that I sculpted in ZBrush and I think this was about 1 million tries and you, as you can see, it loads it up fine. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you're in a pinch and you need to view an OBJ file, I uh, definitely recommend just going in here, going into SculptGL and uh, in importing your file. And then you can see the OBJ really quickly. I do have a pretty good graphics card, so I do believe this does run on the graphics card, so yeah, your mileage might vary be, uh, on the speed uh, of how this runs, but I think it's pretty good. I think you can run this on a pretty low spec machine, uh, at least to just ha have fun and start you know, sculpting with. Uh, again, um, the main thing I want to uh, want you to remember is when you're sculpting, turn on this dynamic topology, set your subdivision to 20 and decimation to 4 and uh, that's going to really uh, help speed up the sculpting process and uh, let you have fun with it. 
Okay, so that, that's the end of the video, I guess. <laughs> I found out about this program and I thought I, I'd tell you about it because it's, it's pretty good. It, it's, yeah, it's, it's, well, something that's running on the web browser for and you can access anytime for free. Uh, it, it's pretty gnarly. <laughs> okay, guys, enjoy.